Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery with Smart Money Alliance and IIMFL.org. It is 7.59 a.m. Central on a beautiful Friday morning, the last Friday of, of August, August 28, 2020. Let's start with uh, reciting our mission statement, and then we'll get into our topic for today. We are a nonprofit organization committed to narrowing the racial wealth gap by teaching financial literacy, improving credit scores, and facilitating the development of minority-owned small businesses. As you can probably glean, a big part of what we do is, is leading with education. And frankly, through education, we accomplish all three parts of our mission. Being able to improve financial literacy, obviously, helping very practically and effectively improve credit scores, both personal and business, and then lastly, helping with the development and success of minority-owned small businesses. As we announced yesterday, we've rolled out a variation of the entrepreneurship program. So on the IIMFL.org website, the entrepreneurship program, which is four weeks in duration, continues to be available. Not a bit of change to it. And that is a, a model in which you teach the curriculum once a week for four weeks, and you can teach it in person or online. What we covered yesterday is a variance of that, which we simply call the small business certification. But the curriculum is exactly the same. So this is the flyer that we shared with everyone earlier this week that gives a, a brief review of it. So it's the same curriculum. The difference is really twofold. We're teaching it instead of you, and you're paid the same. And then secondly, it's only available online and on demand. So it's frankly less personal because you're able to go teach it in person or live online, have it more interactive. And that is excellent. That's probably a, even a better learning experience. But what we've learned is that some of you are maybe not quite comfortable or comfortable yet in having the responsibility of teaching the curriculum. Therefore, we've, we've lifted that burden off of your shoulders if you want that. So you can make available the entrepreneurship program as we've been promoting and you teach it, or you can promote the small business certification and we teach it. And we flip over to this other page, which is the implementation guide. And I'll make it larger so we can all see it. As I get older, I can't read the fine print quite as well as I used to be able to. And so let's go through this one pager. Now, this one pager was meant for multiple purposes. It's certainly meant to provide the clear guidance so you can effectively, immediately, today, start helping clients and generating income for yourself but also concurrently, it frankly is an effective piece to share with key influencers. Well, who are key influencers, you might ask? Well, key influencers are entities and organizations or, or even people that have a sphere of influence. So by them buying into, quote unquote, what we do, they could drive volume to you. And so who might a key influencer be? It could be small business bankers. It could be score chapters. It could be chambers. It could be churches. It could be co-working spaces. It could be business organizations and business associations. It could be meetup group organizers, Facebook group organizers, and many others. So what we're going through here is fine for them to see, and it serves two purposes as our training guide for you and I to go through today, and then also for you to share with others as you're trying to build momentum. So let's go through it, and then we'll explore questions, comments, concerns. Some of it is a little bit redundant, but the goal on this was for it to be a one-page resource sheet. And so we're going to make the assumption that if you were giving this or sharing this with a potential referral partner, we're not going to assume that they've seen the flyer, which would be great if they did. We're not gonna assume that they've been on the website. We're not gonna assume that they've watched any other YouTube videos. We're assuming this is all they've seen. 
So it may be a little bit redundant for you, but let's just go through it. And then again, we'll, we'll cover any questions, comments, concerns you have. So we start with the background. Well, of course, the title is it's an implementation guide for the small business certification, which is this curriculum here. Background. So we call it the SBC. The small business certification, the SBC, is designed for entrepreneurs with a concept for a business and want to start within three to six months, I'm sorry, next six to 12 months, as well as startup businesses in operation less than two years that want to develop a plan for more growth, profitability, and access to capital. So in layman's terms, it's for pre-launch and startup businesses, and commonly in the, in the industry, startup means two years or less in business. Now, I know you and I could debate that, and maybe that's not a good description or a definition, I should say, of startup, but that's commonly what's used, and that's the target audience for this. Pre-launch and startup businesses, meaning they've been in business less than two years. That two years is important because there are a number of funding sources that look for at least two years in operation. And so conversely, uh, there are uh, some small businesses that struggle to access capital in the first two years, and that's really our target audience. All right, next paragraph here. So the SBC, the Small Business Certification, content comes from the award-winning curriculum developed by the FDIC and promoted by the, the SBA. You know, these are some pretty good acronyms or names to drop, right? Who knows about money? Certainly the FDIC. Who knows about small business? The United States Small Business Administration. So this is making a really strong pitch to whomever you're sharing this with. Now, our SBC itself was created by college professors, SBA, SBDC advisors, SCORE mentors, and business bankers to assist small businesses in successfully starting entrepreneurial endeavors and access to capital to reach their potential. I was looking for the right time in this morning's conversation to share this with you, and maybe now is not the right time, but I'll just I'll get it out there anyway because it's, it's on my mind. Half the battle is getting small businesses capital. The other half is them using it wisely because I see some horror stories. We have a client. We just helped get their first tranche of funding. It was just under 40000 so I know it's not 100000 but the first round, first tranche was just under $40,000. How long do you think it took that client until they spent all of it but $38? One month. They spent all the money that we helped them raise in that first tranche in the first month. Well, you might say, well, maybe they needed it. Well, we went through how they spent it. They went to the tattoo parlor four times. They went to the polo store and bought $700 of clothing. They went to Foot Locker twice, also spent about $700. They spent a thousand, sent a thousand dollars to mom. I mean, it was labeled as that. And so I'm not judging that person, but my goodness, we need to be cognizant that many small businesses need help, not only in accessing capital, but getting their infrastructure and, and business in order to be successful. I'm worried about that client because he's burnt through almost $40,000 in 30 days. Now he's got some great tattoos, some new shirts, some new shoes, but we've got no operating capital now. And that's not what lenders are wanting to do. So just keep in mind what we're doing here with education is crucial because we can both together, we can help small businesses access capital, but we also can help them increase the probability of being successful. And guess what? Paying that back. Because if they don't pay that loan back, that lender's gonna be disappointed, aren't they? And that's not a positive reflection on the borrower nor on us. All right, so back to the CBC SBC program. It is a hands-on, in-depth, four-week online course with personalized mentoring designed to provide practical information, tips, exercises, and tools. The SBC incorporates weekly online on-demand lessons 
taught by, a highly, by highly qualified professionals, and then personalized mentoring. So in the SBC program, we'll teach, and then if you want, you can do the personalized mentoring between lessons. But we're even gonna relax that. If, if you don't want to work with the clients between weeks and helping them implement, like developing their financial needs analysis, their personal financial statement, we're not gonna make that a requirement in the small business certification. Now, in contrast, in the entrepreneurship program, it's expected, right? If you go sell the entrepreneurship program, you're expected to teach it and then to work with those clients. The small business certification that we're talking about here and here relaxes that. So if all you want to do is bring clients to the table and do nothing else, that's okay. Or if you want to be involved as well in the implementation, you can be. But we'll get more to that in just a second. Eligible participants will have the option upon completion of the four-week course to receive additional assistance to receive $100,000 or more. All right, so now let's, so that was the first heading, background. We've covered the background. You knew most of this probably, but if you're sharing this with prospective referral partners. Now, this obviously isn't something you would give to a prospective participant, not that they shouldn't see it, but they're not the targeted audience. Your prospective participants would want to see this flyer. Your prospective referral sources would want to see this. Okay, so what's the value proposition to participants? In other words, what's in it for them? Well, they're going to learn how to properly set up a business, regardless if their pre-launch are already in the startup phase. And uh, that's, that's important. We frequently, I have a client who's a vice president of a bank. He's working with us. We're just about ready to go for his capital raise. And, and he makes good income, makes right about a quarter million dollars a year as vice president of a bank. But, but you would be shocked. You would be shocked by the lack of awareness that most people have of how to properly set up a business, including that client. So uh, th this is just crucial that we teach people. You know, getting them the capital is one thing, but we need to help them be educated and positioned for success and that's clearly what we're committed to with the small business certification. All right, next, we want them to understand how to access capital as well as different sources of funding. What you and I know, I think most small business owners either don't know or they don't take into consideration. There are many different sources of capital. Some of them look at some factors, others don't. For instance, we talk about two years in business. Are there some sources of capital that require that? Yes. Do all of them? Of course not. Do some of them look at personal credit? Yes. Do all of them? No. Are some sources of capital based only off of business credit, off of your EIN? Yes. Are all of them that way? No. So th that's the point. We have to help them understand that, that all sources of capital aren't the same and singular in requirements. And that's, that's a big part of the battle is getting the right type of capital on our plan. Because if we pursue the wrong type of capital, either we'll be denied or it's going to delay funding. We are certainly going to give them a tangible walk away with a lender compliant business plan and loan package, including financial projections out 36 months. And so that's something that they could take wherever they wanted. They could use it as an internal management tool. And then of course, if we're gonna work with them after the class, then that's crucial for us to help them get funding. Next, we're gonna help them have greater familiarity on key financial management topics. The example I use here most often, and, and I just talked about it yesterday, so I'm sorry it's redundant, but it's, it's in my world, one of the biggest deficits is the importance of having interim financial statements the ability to produce an income statement and a balance sheet on demand regard well pre-launch may not be applicable but from the day that we started that we form the entity whether it's a sole proprietorship llc c corp s corp doesn't matter when we've gotten our ein we've opened our bank account those are kind of the three things to to, to form a business to birth a business from that point going forward, we should be producing interim financial statements, even if we haven't had one single client transaction. And 
most people don't realize that they don't get that and that's a barrier so that's just one example of what we teach and again there's no secrets of what we teach we've provided every one of you or should have provided every one of you the powerpoints that we're going to teach off of which is the same that you would teach off of off the entrepreneurship program we've provided every one of you the instructor's guides we're very transparent we've provided every one of you the handouts that the participants use so I'm not being elusive here. I'm just not giving you an exclusive list because I'm assuming that if you want to know more, you'll review the information that we've shared with you. All right, and then the last learning objective, which is a really, really hot one right now, and I'm not making that up. We, we're getting more inquiries now, I think, than we ever have on business credit, business credit, want to build business credit. And so that's part of the curriculum, right? Week two, is we talk about business credit, right? That's that's the topic of week two. All right, so those are the learning objectives. The deliverables for the participants, what are they gonna walk away with? So we're gonna talk about what they've learned up here, but now what do they walk away with? And when you look at this and say, well, yeah, it's not free, it's a grant subsidized program, they are paying $99 a week or, or a cumulative amount of 386, but for what they get, it's, it's not too good to be true, but it's a no brainer, isn't it? Because they're going to get a lender compliant business plan with financial projections that they could easily go spend several thousand dollars on. We're going to help them have an optimized personal financial statement. I don't really know what the value of that is, but it's important to have to accurately reflect their, uh, their personal net worth. We're going to help them have an improved business credit profile. And this ties back to what we were talking about earlier, business credits, hot, hot, hop hot, 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 and we're going to be able to help them understand it and implement. That's worth, I think, another couple thousand dollars in the marketplace. We're going to help them complete a financial needs analysis and their corresponding financial plan, which could make all the difference in the world in terms of helping them have a plan to get from where they're at to where they want to be. Because we all know without a plan, we're unlikely to be we're less likely to be successful. We're gonna obviously have a capital match at the end, which identifies the best sources of capital based upon their unique circumstances. Now, if they're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for them, then we can continue on and help them with the capital raise that was referenced here. If they're not a good fit for us or we're not a good fit for them, then we stop at the capital match. And, and you know, some of you are asking, you know, what's the difference between this and the capital ready package 2.0. Well, the capital ready package 2.0 does not have an upfront cost. There, there is a refundable deposit, but there's not an upfront fee. And it automatically includes our commitment, our guarantee, our contractual obligation to help them raise at least $100,000, where in this case, we're stopping at the capital match unless both parties decide to proceed forward. Now, with that being said, this four week curriculum that we're going through is going to be the first four weeks of the Capital Ready Package 2.0, effective in September. So we want all clients starting in September to go through this educational curriculum, regardless if they're in the Capital Ready Package 2.0. So I'm not saying they have to enroll twice, so don't misinterpret me. I'm not saying, oh, you wanna do Capital Ready Package 2.0, you have the refundable deposit plus this. No, we'll include this for free in the Capital Ready Package 2.0, so don't confuse that. But what I'm saying is this education is so needed and so important from these horror stories that we're seeing that I'm sharing with you, rather anecdotally, we've got to educate as well as get them money, because if we just give them money, you know, the Nike stores might be real happy with it, but is it really accomplishing what we need to, to do? Okay, so move it on then. So then they also get a certificate of completion acknowledging their diligence. So it's, it's a certification course, as you can see in the C, the small business certification. Now let's go ahead and identify the value proposition for distribution partners. That includes that we're going to be assisting entrepreneurs by improving financial literacy and accessing capital. So think of this, if, if you're the pastor of the church or the director of the chamber, or, or the small business banker, th this is what they're focused on, what's in it for them, because this was what was in it for the participants, right? 
Okay, so down here then, we see that we're going to assist entrepreneurs by improving financial literacy and access to capital, number one. Number two, and, and we can't hide it, we need to be transparent, we do a 50-50 split of the cost of the, the enrollment in the small business certification. Now, if you're getting referrals from a church, a chamber, what have you, they need to know that you're getting half. We need to be transparent. Now, if you want to share some of that with them, that would be a best practice, wouldn't it? Because now you're kind of hooking your hose to their running faucet and they're feeding you more and more business. But if you don't want to share any of that, you don't have to, but we do need to be transparent and that's why we don't mind putting that on here. And then the third bullet gets to the point that I made earlier. If you want to be working with the clients between sessions, then you can. So for example, if you want to write their key person policy, then you can. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. If you want to work with them to create their personal financial statement, their financial needs analysis and so forth, then you can, but you don't have to. So that's a role that can be plugged in or unplugged of the small business certification which is different than the entrepreneurship program. The entrepreneurship curriculum is where you're, you're kind of taking care of it A to Z. Here, you can back out and, and do just what you want, which could be as simply as just referring people in, or you can go ahead and work with them between lessons. Obviously, in no circumstance in this model would you have to teach the curriculum because we're providing that for you with, with no reduction in income to you. Okay, so now let's drill down to the very simple implementation process, which is maybe the most important item on the whole page, so you understand uh, how to implement. So at the conclusion, you know, another three minutes, five minutes from now, you should be ready to go enroll people. So how does it work? Well, first, you want to be aware that you can educate them using an embedded YouTube video that we have, a flyer, which is here, content, and all of that sits on the small business certification page of the IIMFL website. So I won't go over there at the moment, but, but it's, it's all there. So those are tools you can use. Now, what I think many of you are overlooking, which is my fault, not yours, maybe until now, after now it's your fault, but up to this point it's my fault, is pretty much every Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock central, we have a webinar that's designed for prospective participants. And here's the registration link. You can send your prospects to this and we'll reiterate the message and the value proposition and answer their questions for you. Again, without any reduction of commission to you. So we've got our central staff, home office staff, corporate staff, whatever you wanna call us. And we're doing this about 20 times a month about 240, 250 times a year. So if, if you have a funnel, like CT mentioned yesterday, if you all have a funnel, but you're not closing, then you know, certainly use these tools that are on demand here. But also, I, I would be very encouraging, if I can highlight it properly, of, of getting them onto these webinars, or at least letting them know about these webinars because it's an opportunity for them in about a 15 minute period to get an overview and we'll answer those hard questions that maybe you're not comfortable or not able to answer. Frankly, you could drive them right in to here without even doing number one, but of course you wanna protect your funnel. And so it's your responsibility to follow up with them after number two to go ahead and, and, and submit them in and close them. So with that being said, let's recap. So number one, we have on-demand tools on the website. Number two, we have almost daily, most Mondays through Fridays, webinar. And then what you're gonna do, step number three, is help them complete the inquiry form that's at the bottom of this page. And we talked about this yesterday. You just put in their name, phone number, email. You put in referred by you, obviously. And in the message, you would just say, that you collected the 396 from the client 
and that you're going to be forwarding half into us and let us know how you're forwarding the half into us via ACH, wire, check, or, or Zelle. And then once we have the, the payment and we have notification that the client's coming aboard through the inquiry form, we match those up, we send the DocuSign over to the client, we execute, and we, we implement. So these are the simple four steps for the SBC program. So what I want to do is, is start digging into your questions, comments, concerns of what is it that would prevent you from taking a very active role, because our goal in September is for each of you to have 20 conversions, 20 conversions. Well, what would 20 conversions mean? That means we've enrolled at least 20 clients in the month of September. That's good for them. You know, they've got their value proposition up here. And for you, what does it mean? Well, we know that you're gonna make 20 times 198, which is right about $4,000 up front. You don't have to teach. You don't even have to work with them between sessions. But if you also want to be involved with the mentoring, as we call it, which is the third bullet, then that'll add another $500 to $1,000 per participant in your pocket. So obviously, then you're doing more, but your, your income is going to, I don't want to say exponentially, but significantly increase. You're going to go from around $200 a client to conservatively $500 a client. And so that would be our goal. If you're helping 20 clients in September and you're making on average 500 per client, could very well be more than you're at 10,000 for a part-time gig. Now, if you want to do it full-time or do more than that, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to get to your questions, comments, concerns using the Q&A function of Zoom. Uh, let's see here. James says he loves the option. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see. Diamond was asking about the question between this and the capital ready. And I think I addressed that through the, the narrative we had. If not, let me know, Diamond. Uh, let's see here. Questions about qualifying. And, and I, I do not feel that it's our role to pre-qualify people to enroll. I think we need to encourage people of all ages and races and, and genders and, and religious preferences and, and sexual orientation. I don't think that there needs to be any filters at all about who we enroll in the curriculum. If, if they have an interest in learning this and doing this, I think we need to reach out and grab them by the hand and uh, get, them, get them engaged. So I don't feel that we need to have any filters. Now, you know, we get them funded and, and they go buy some crazy stuff. Ultimately, that, that's on them. Obviously, we're going to do all we can to teach them proper principles and discipline. But no, I don't, I don't feel that there should be any filters of who we enroll. Uh, let's see here. So although this program and the entrepreneur program are the same, yes, yes. So again, Monique, the small business certification and the entrepreneurship program is the same curriculum. The only two differences is we're teaching this one versus you teaching the other. And then secondly, this is only available online and on demand. This is never taught in person and it's, it's not taught at certain times. It's, it's canned, if you will. Okay, so she asked, if we sell this program, we don't have to teach the clients correct but if we sell the entrepreneur program then you have to teach it that's correct that that's the difference here we're teaching it and the entrepreneurship program you're teaching it so you got it same curriculum okay so peter has a client in capital ready 1.0 if someone was or is in capital CPR 1.0, can they be taken through this four week course? Well, we're building this in to the capital ready package effective September 1st. So going backwards, they won't automatically be enrolled. Uh, they, they can request it, 
but going forward, it'll be embedded into the, the implementation process. But certainly anyone that is in Capital Ready 2.0 already will be eligible for this. If they're all the way back in Capital Ready Package 1.0, that, that's a much older model. And I don't know that they've made a decision about granting all of them ability to participate in this with, without the normal cost. Thank you, Peter. Peggy says she totally agrees. They need the training. When can we begin setting up people? Uh, immediately, immediately. Uh, so thank you, Peggy, for asking that. And it's my fault for not making it clear. So at the conclusion of, of this Zoom webinar, which we're just a minute or two or three away, all you need to do is just follow these steps. Just follow these steps. And then uh, today's Friday, uh, we'll be starting this new curriculum on Tuesday, which is September 1st. So within two business days, they'll be off and, and running. And so, and again, you can mix and match, you know, if there's some of the, the students you want to teach live and others you want to take through the, uh, this variation, it, it's fine. You don't have to be all in one way or the other. Thank you, Peggy. Dion says, if I enroll someone in the Capital Ready program, can I still recommend that they go in the four week? Yeah, so yes, everyone enrolling in the Capital Ready Program 2.0, effective Tuesday, September 1st, will be invited to go through this educational curriculum as well with, with no additional cost. Thank you, Dion. Uh, Joseph asks, how do we get to this page on the website? Okay, so let me stop the pause or pause the share for a second and let me get over there to answer that question joseph okay so here is the iimfl website on the home page here's a link to it but also on the drop down you'll see small business certification so either way from home and here or drop down in here and then it takes us over brief YouTube video I made reference to, brief background, the flyer that we've been looking at, and uh, learning objectives, and then here's the inquiry form where you put in their name, their email, their phone, referred by you. The message is collected 396. Well, I can type it on there, for example. Uh, I collected 396 from client on 828. 2020 and forwarded half via Zell on same day. So typically you're going to want to submit the inquiry form uh, for alerting us of the client the same day that you are forwarding the money. So those should be happening on the same day and then we match that up and implement. Thank you, Joseph, for asking. And yeah, Peggy, we can begin immediately. All right, Letty, I see that you need some help, so we can definitely get with you. I'll call you here afterwards. Sorry for any breakdown there, but I'll get with you, Letty, as soon as we get done here. James asks, who teaches the client about creating fin financial statements in Capital Ready 2.0? Well, in, in, in the Legacy Capital Ready 2.0, we ask for financial statements, and if they don't understand what those are, we describe them. But in the past, there's not been the same light level of education in the Capital Ready Package 2.0 as there is now. And so uh, we, we can flip over, for example, to the entrepreneurship program. So this is the one you teach, and then this is the one that we teach for you. But in both cases, it's the same exact curriculum these four weeks. And so James is asking who's teaching about financial statements in the Capital Ready 2.0. So uh, in the Capital Ready 2.0, uh, if they're not going through this educational curriculum, we tell them about it, answer questions, but we're not really teaching. That's the beauty of this is now we have a structured approach to education, four weeks in duration, a topic each week with subsequent implementation steps. Hopefully they answer your question, James. 
Yes, Monique, and I think you're right, and that, that's why we kind of evolved to this. Some of you have a real passion for teaching and want to do the teaching, but others, I think it, it bogs you down and it keeps you from helping as many people and making as much money. So I, I do agree with you, Monique. I think for many folks, leveraging the small business certification is going to be a better option because you make the same income, but you have less responsibilities, which reduces your load so you can help more people. I agree with you, Monique. All right, last question here, I think. Monique asks, so what is the process once we sell this? Okay, yeah, so she wants to know more specifically what to expect. So the, the curriculum, again, is the same as the, on the entrepreneurship program. However, these educational topics are going to be sent to them once a week, and they are on demand. So they're not at a certain time at 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. They'll be able to access it 24-7. We don't send all four lessons immediately because there's implementation steps that they need to do between lessons that build on one another. And we know for most people, their human nature is if we send them all four lessons, they would do that and they would skip the implementation part. So the implementation step is equally as important as the education. If you, Monique, or anyone else, wants to do the implementation, then you can. And if you don't, then we'll plug in another financial literacy educator that will do the implementation. Whoever is doing the implementation, of course, is going to do some key things like the financial needs analysis, which is going to help us understand that along with, with the other pieces of information gathered, uh, do they need a key person policy? What type of coverage do they need to protect their assets and so forth? So the point I'm making is whoever does the implementation steps will be writing the key person policy. So we can't pick and choose. You can't say, oh, I'll just write the, the, the key person policy, but I don't want to do the implementation steps. That would be inconsistent with the model. It means we have too many people we're juggling and the client has too many interfaces. They should have only two people they deal with, whoever's teaching the topic and whoever's doing what we call the mentoring with them afterwards between lessons. So you could teach it or you could not teach it. You could help implement or you could not help implement. That, that would be your, your choice. All right, well, we covered a lot of information. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, what we certainly hope that you'll do is, is get engaged and let's help at least 20 small businesses with the small business certification in the month of September. We've got a couple days before the start of the month, so it's time to think and plan. I just shared with you that one-page implementation guide that's really, really effective in sharing with key influencers. And uh, the, the ball's in your court. We're here to help you, but the, the ball's in your court. Thank you so much, and we'll see you back on Monday morning. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend.